Okay, our choir is going to sing a song for you this morning that is uh, uh, a taste of what's going to happen next weekend, okay? So you're just going to get just a little taste of it. stand in awe tonight of what you did for us nearly 2,000 years ago, that you loved us enough to send your son to become God-man, the humanness just like we are. He faced all the temptations that we face. He was tempted in every way as we are tempted. We cannot comprehend such wonderful and depth of love. Thank you. It is good news, it's joyous news. And as we listen today from the words of your word, recording the words of Mary in her response to the realization that she was going to be with child, and she broke out in song, poetic song. We have it written in your word. Help us to understand it. And may the joy of Mary's song be our joy today. In Christ's name, amen. If you would take uh, scripture, <clears throat> whatever form that you have it, excuse me, <clears throat> there's a Bible in front of you or if you have an electronic device, take it, turn the sound off, but read it with me. 
if you would. Luke's account of the gospel, chapter 1. We'll begin to read with verse 46. And would you stand for the reading of God's word to honor it? Chapter 1 of Luke's account of the gospel. Verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Verse 50. His mercy extends to those who reverence him or fear him from generation to generation. He has promised mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Verse 53, he has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Verse 30, 56 says, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. What is the Christmas song that you have sung in the shower recently? Most of us do our best singing in the shower. Not that I've heard you in the shower, but I have heard you else places. It's got to be better for some of us in the shower. Except those who are in the choir. Right, Walt? Okay. Present company accepted. Uh, let me just give you some uh, facts. Some of, you, of us are trivial in our thought processes. Now, Google, you know you can believe everything that you find on Google, don't you? It's uh, almost inspired. Almost inspired. Google says that there are 263 million Christmas songs. My oldest daughter, who's very... Uh, uh, critical of her. Well, she critiques her father's facts. Uh, she tried to find Google and she did a mathematical evaluation of it all and I still choose to believe Google rather than my daughter. <laughs> I, I said it right, 263 million Christmas songs. They include All I Want for Christmas is my uh, Frosty the Grandma got <laughs> That's a very spiritually minded thing, isn't it? Ava Maria, O Holy Night, Handel's Messiah, and everything in between. The number one Christmas song is believed to be what? White Christmas, as sung by Bing Crosby. 50 million copies have been sold of White Christmas. Now here's what is sort of startling. Of the top 10 digital downloads, and if you're not uh, techie, you may not know what a digital download is, but that's when you go to Google and then go out there and search and find some songs and then you bring it home in your device. Some of us can't do that, but that's what a digital download is. Of the top 10 digital downloads of Christmas songs, top 10, none of them are Christ-centered in words or references. So what song are you gonna sing this Christmas? Let's look at Mary's song, if you would. We don't know too much about Mary, uh, though we know that uh, there was uncertainty about where she was born, but she was born in, 
to parents who are part of the staunch Jewish community living in the dry Galilean hills surrounding Nazareth. There were uncertainties about her living conditions, the uncertainty of living in her home in her area included the unpredictable rain along with invading locusts and field mice destroying the crops. And she had to learn how to experience a strong reliance on the Lord, even as a child, and his provisions. Her daily responsibilities, in part as a rural Galilean family member, would have included grinding wheat and barley into flour, preparing dish, soft vegetables, nuts, mutant. Mutton, that's not mutant, mutton. That's, is that goat or sheep? Sheep, thank you. Thank you for the farmers here today. <laughs> Baking bread, spinning wool and making clothes and fetching jars of water from the well for cooking and washing. There would be a few chickens and a donkey to feed, some of the crops to be sown and harvested would, in the area would be wheat, barley, olives, for food and oil for the lamps, figs and grapes. So she was a farm girl, a working farm girl. So her culture was at a time when women were not highly respected, mainly only as a wife and as a mother. And then the visit of the angel Gabriel made the announcement that she had been specially chosen. Now do you have a picture of her you might say a, a peasant girl having a pretty hard life in a pretty basic family, earthly people that depend on the things of the earth to survive. A young girl in her teens, never having known a man, not highly respected in her society as a female, the only hope that she had might be that she would become a wife someday, a mother someday. And yet there's an angel that comes to her and brings a big announcement to her. That she's been specially chosen, handpicked by God to bear the son of God, Jesus, his Messiah. Can you get a mental image? What a surprise. What an unusual event. If that happened today, we might say that she was fantasizing. She was dreaming. Especially the religious sector of that time would say that she was out of her mind. Maybe we ought to have her committed. But there was something the best special about this. Uh, she knew that the Messiah was going to uh, come through her. She knew that the promises of the Old Testament back to Abraham would be fulfilled. She apparently was a religious person because she knew the scriptures. I just take a sidebar issue. You know, you will enjoy the blessings of life if you know the promises of God. Because when God promises, he performs and when those promises are performed in your life, you can rejoice and realize that God is faithful. So because she knew the word of the Lord, she was prepared to have a divine visitation. I'm just taking a sidebar issue here. If you'll prepare your mind and heart through the word of God, you'll have a more blessed experience this Christmas. It will be a joyous time, a special time. It could be the best time you've ever had in celebration of the Christ child coming, if you're prepared for it. I know gifts, things, family, but don't neglect preparing your heart and your mind. That's why we're reading through the book of Luke, a chapter that corresponds to the day of the month. And by the 24th, you'll hear the whole story, how God has been faithful, how God is good. He's an awesome person. He keeps his word. He keeps his promises. Not always according to your schedule, but yes or no or not now. But he won't walk out on you. 
And he didn't walk out on Mary. Well, there's three points to my message today. It's a song of love. Praise erupted from her innermost being like an overflowing fountain. Her song is made up of images and references from the scriptures, from Genesis to Job, through the Psalms, from Isaiah, and the highlighted steep of her thinking was in the word of God. Saturate your mind with the word of God and the things of this world will fade away in perspective. We can either pray the promises or we can pray the problems. We've got a lot of problems today, haven't we? If you're a staunch Trump supporter, you see all the problems. If you are a staunch, I dare not say liberal, but whatever the opposite of a staunch Trump person is, you would like to paint a, a glorious picture. We've got problems. But if you understand the word of God, God is faithful Amen. Yes. all the time. All the time. Don't forget that. And he's faithful not only to nations, but he's faithful to families. I read the story again preceding uh, this story this morning. And continuously it says he's faithful from generation to generation to generation. What did I say the other day? There had been 42 generations from, from Abraham until the time of Jesus. Don't worry about your, your immediate past generation. If you have prayed and if you commit it to the Lord, even if the kids, the grandkids, the great grandkids are not doing everything that you think they ought, just keep on praying because God is faithful. God hears the prayers and I believe they are recorded in heaven long Amen. after you're gone. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. My grandmother prayed. She's been gone. My mother's been gone nine years. She was a prayer warrior. But I still see my mother's prayers and my grandmother's prayers being answered. Amen. Mm -hmm. So don't give up. God is faithful, as the scripture says in today's lesson from generation to generation to generation. Just leave the legacy, the spiritual legacy, and leave it up to God in his time. Amen, church? Amen. For Mary had a song of love. And if you really trust God, you can sing the song of love, the love of God. And if you really want to love people, you have to love God first. There's some stinkers in the world. You're going to run into them if you haven't already. But let the love of God flow through you. Amen. And I'm going to challenge you again today as you leave to take a heart. If you don't know what we do here, we, we give out hearts. Uh, some of you give out your own heart. Was it Karen said she gave her heart away? Along other things, with her tithe and her offering, she gave her heart. But you said God is faithful, didn't you, Karen? Yes. Okay. And I'm trying to feel in my pocket where my heart is. <laughs> I got two of them. Had a funny experience this week. Now I'm rambling, okay, but you got time. <laughs> it's only 11.30. They don't ser start serving food at Golden Corral. They switch over from breakfast to lunch soon. So, I was having my car washed, and it was a slow day. It was a drizzling rain, and, and the young lady that was shining up my rims, uh, she was talkative. It was about tip time, you know. They get very friendly about tip time. And, and so I thought, well, I, I will converse with her. And so I reached into my pocket, and I said, here, let me give you a heart, and let me tell you that God loves you and somebody else does. Oh, she said, I still have the one you gave me before. Oh. I said, I gave you a heart? She said, yes, I remember you. If you give somebody a heart with love, they'll remember you. That's right. And you never know what that's going to mean to somebody. So I'm going to ask you to give your heart away today. Not like Karen did. 
well, some of you may want to do that. Uh, maybe Santa Claus will be good to you. I don't know. <laughs> but as you leave, you can pick up a handful of hearts and, and just say here, you know, God loves you and so do we, mm -hmm. or so do I, whatever. A song of love. Now I'm back on my outline. Number two, song of faith. Faith grows out of a true worship and adoration of God. Hebrews 11, chapter 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Faith is believing that because God has declared something, it is already accomplished. That's real faith. It's just a matter of when. So hang on. Wait and you will see. She was still a young peasant girl from Nazareth. And yet she had a firm foundation that what God said, you could count on. Dads, we like to make promises to our family, don't we? It's hard to keep those promises, but make sure that you try. Because you're establishing an image of fatherhood. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, fathers, men. But you see, one of the things that often is a stronghold around the altar is that somehow they have a hard time conceiving of a God who loves them so passionately to forgive them and to forget because they did not have a strong father relationship on earthly basis. Fathers, keep your promises. Build a legacy. You'll find God blesses that even after you're gone. I can't help think of Mr. Friesland today. I've visited with him in the life care units and a strong testimony, a faithful guy, been married 75 years, I think. We've awarded them the, the longest married couple in our church just a year or so ago. But as I listened to him and I heard his testimony, of his faithfulness down through the years. And then I turned and talked to his son, Ron. And God has been faithful in Mr. Friesland's life and in Ron's life. Because you see, God honors our faithfulness, our faith. Keep the faith. Number three, Mary's song was a song of hope. Nurtured and strengthened and encouraged by her faith. It is a hope that is based on the promises of God. She goes back to Abraham many generations ago in her life, and she recalls them in the song that she's singing, that you made a promise to my, my descendant, Abraham, and to all of his descendants, and now you, the angel Gabriel said, all of that's going to be fulfilled in you, a little peasant girl. You see, God comes to the humble, the simple. Don't try to complicate God. You are complicated, I'm complicated, but God is not so complicated. He's just God. He's good. You know, I hope I make it through the holidays without gaining 10 pounds. I think last week every meeting I had was over a meal. And if that's not enough, I get some, since I'm a single guy, some of you ladies want to feed me well, and I get food to take home. But you know what I really like more than anything else? <laughs> I never will live that down. If you didn't hear that, Donald McDonald French fries. I'm a meat and potatoes person. You don't have to make it fancy. You don't have to put all those ingredients in it. Just make it simple and good. It's hard to be good. And you know, God honors just goodness. Don't complicate God. He just likes meat and potatoes. Can I say that? Well, he may slip over to McDonald's every once in a while. 
and get some french fries. You see, I want to give you a song of hope. Mary's hope was firmly anchored in what God had promised. It's interesting. Let's go back to songs because this is a Mary's song that we're talking about today. It, within the last 36 years, there have been at least 733 different recordings of Silent Night. Some of you said that might be the most popular song. Let me tell you a little bit about Silent Night. It may take on a little bit meaning, more meaningfulness to you. In 1818, when uh, this carol was created, Christmas music, so Google says, again, you know, the gospel according to Google. So don't challenge me on that, challenge Google. The Christmas music was written with one single purpose in mind, and that was to reinforce the existence of class distinctions. The king and the church. Handel and Bach's music served to sustain the power of the king and the church when the church was a state. Silent Night in 1818 was written as a song giving hope for the ordinary people. It's a rather simple song, isn't it? A simple tune. I'm not a musician. But either I've heard it so often and we hear it continuously during the holidays that we can just sort of sing along because we've heard it so much that we know the words. But it's an easy to sing song. It doesn't have all those high notes and low notes and, and all those things that you get excited about and, <laughs> and kick your foot about and fall off the podium with. <laughs> it's just a simple song. It was written for simple people. And God came for the humble. You say, are you equate, equating humility with simple? In some respects, yes. Because humility means teachable. And you've got to let your guard down if you're going to be taught. I, I'm doing a study on confession. And it says that there's a difference between confession and repentance. Confession is admission. Repentance is being sorry for. But confession opens the door for God to come in. I heard this analogy, and with this I'm finished. If you live in a city and you leave the door open, or in some cases, unlocked. You never know who will come through the door. And once they're in the door, they sort of have charge of the place. You don't know what, if they're unwanted, you don't know what to do with them. You can tell them to get out, but they're in. Say, so what's the analogy? When you open your mind and your heart and don't guard it, all sorts of demons come in. Comes in through the television, comes in through the magazines you get, the paraphernalia, the robocalls, and strongholds. Once they're in, it's tough to get them out. Keep the door guarded to your heart. Give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and let his love pervade and live within and he will guard the door of your heart and mind and your home stand with me if you would father we lit the candle today of joy there's joy in Jesus Mary had a song of joy a song of hope a song of love, a song of faith. We don't know the songs that we'll sing this season, but may it be a song that is pleasing to you, 
a joyful song, a song of hope, a song of faith, a song of love. Help us to love people even when they're unlovable. Help us to have hope when it seems that all hope is gone, that hope has disappeared. There doesn't seem to be any way out. You always have a way. Help us to have a song of faith that we trust not so much in ourselves, not so much in what others people, other people says or what other people do, but our faith is in you, that you're faithful from generation to generation, from 42 generations past up until Mary's time. You kept your promises. And going forward from the birth of the Christ, you'll keep your promises until our last day on earth is done. And we'll hear you say, hopefully and prayerfully, welcome home. Welcome to my house. Help us to sing a song of Mary. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing praises unto him, the doxology. If you need to pray, the altar is always open. If you need special prayer, I will be glad to stop by and pray with you or for you. Or see me at the end of the service. Lead us if you would, Walt. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him. Father, may we go in the joy of Christmas because Jesus is at the center of our Christmas. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray, and God's people said, Amen. God bless.